Okay, so my name is Maha. First of all, I would like to thank uh, Sudan uh, Startup Hub guidance and team. Um, they're doing a wonderful, wonderful job, and um, this initiative yani, represents a great start um, for all women to come and share their experience and learning and um, just, you know, sort of kind of connect and network with people. Um, today I'm going to be speaking to you about my humble experience um, in entrepreneurship and general and specifically in incubators, business incubators, and how business incubators can play a great role in, 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 in economic development and creating diversity. Um, first of all, before I start, I'll just um, define what a business incubator is. A business incubator is an organization <coughs> that supports new and startup ideas or companies that, um, that, that tries to grow. You know? Uh, what they do is provide diverse, customized services for these entrepreneurs and startup so they can grow and commercialize their businesses. So let's assume Umiya here has an idea. She owns her business, an online magazine. She comes to Maha, who owns an incubator. Uh, what she does, she comes and says, well, Maha, I have an idea, but I have no clue how I start. I have no clue what to do with it. Um, what we do is basically we help you from your idea stage we sit down with you and try to understand what exactly you want to achieve from your business, and we sort of make it into an actual viable business. You do a business model, you do your marketing plan, you do your operations, and so on, and we help you with that. And then we invite you to come and stay in our incubator. Basically, we provide you with office space. What we do is we provide you with diverse services coming from an office space or co-working space. We provide you with support with your business development. We do networking um, activities like this conference, for example. We try to invite a lot of people who could be beneficial to your business. What we do as well is we help you with marketing, HR, um, support with accounting. You know, all the sort of business services as an entrepreneur you need. Because to be honest, entrepreneurs are sort of poor, have money, so we try to help you with funding as well, try to give you people who would be able to also support you with coaching and mentoring, you know, if you're a technology sort of a person and trying to create a business, sometimes you don't have the business qualities uh, for you to develop. So basically we provide you with that um, services as well. Another thing is, um, as I said, uh, mentoring, and also the administrative support, you know, like um, in access to internet, printers, and, and, and so on. Cool? So, everyone sort of have an idea what is a business incubator? Yes, no? Yes. Any questions? Yes, please be exciting for me. Cool? Um, yeah. So, another thing is, for the incubators, there's different types of incubator. For example, the startup, Sudan Startup Hub, is a type of incubator. They provide you with a co-working space, certain services, but, for example, I came from an incubator that was a non-for-profit incubator, which is um, government-driven. It was made by the Ministry of Information and Communication Technology, so it was an a technology incubator. The incubator was purely and fully funded by the government. So if Umnia here came, came with her idea, we support her with all the services that I just mentioned for free. We don't take equity from her, uh, from her business, we don't ask her for anything. So that's a non-for-profit incubator. There are types of incubators like a corporate incubator. Let's, just, let's take that for example. DAL can decide tomorrow that they want to have their own corporate incubator. Meaning is um, they want to I, they want to kind of explore new innovative ways to produce a certain product. They want to create a new line of products. What do they do is what they ask their employees or people from outside to you know what brainstorm, innovate, and come up with products that we can invest in. You can have share, but also we can have share. This is, these are corporate incubators. Corporate incubators, they increase the level of innovation and interaction and, or, and also increase the ownership from the employee's side. Tamam? Then there are co-working spaces, innova innovation labs. Those are more into, for, more into technology, more into health, and, and so on. This are sort of, they, 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 they don't give you a lot of ownership as an individual, as an entrepreneur. Tamam? Cool. All right, so I wanted to speak about incubators as part of, a, of an ecosystem. Tamam? As an entrepreneur, sorry for saying tamam so much. 
if you guys have any question, I hate to speak at people, so if you have any question, comment, just um, tell me, okay? Um, all right, so uh, being an entrepreneur, you know, if, if you're a young person, again, let's use Omnia. Um, Omnia is an, is an entrepreneur who, enjoy, who joined an incubator. She has only minimum knowledge about her idea, which is basically the online magazine. She just knows how to write and so on. I'm just assuming here, you know, just for the sake of the scenario. But she doesn't have the technology background. Tamam? She came to the incubator. However, there are so many other elements that we need to, if, if we're an incubator or if we're someone who's trying to help Omnia, to help her to achieve her um, business. For example, and this is what we call the entrepreneurial ecosystem. We have to have, for example, sort of um, smooth or simple laws and regulations, you know, to start up a business. For example, in, in Qatar, it, it's very difficult. There are so many requirements for a person to start up a business. You know, you have to have a Qatar partner, you have to have a 200,000 Qatar real, you have to have a, just a sort of a very long list of, um, of, of requirements. Let alone the, reg the regulations themselves. There's so many obstacles for a person to start up a business. Whereas in other countries, you can do it online. And you can get your commercial registration number and you can start doing business tomorrow. So this is part of an ecosystem, or this is part of a support system that we need to have infrastructure. You know, from roads to having a strong um, IT connection, Wi-Fi, you know, all of these simple stuff as an infrastructure. If my business is in industry, you know, having an industrial area where I can actually build a factory, you know, if I'm in real estate, having, you know, proper land where I can actually do my business. You know, infrastructure actually also supports into, create, into helping Umiya start her business. Education. Having entrepreneurship as an education element, in, uh, having entrepreneurship in the education system is very crucial and important. Um, I remember in our university we had to, we, um, we were taught entrepreneurship in the final years and it was just, you know, like the, it was the first time that was like five or six years ago. So having it from now into the school, from the school system to the university system, what is entrepreneurship? How to, what is, uh, how to be an entrepreneur? You know, what are the skills required? What is it? Because there is such sort of a misconception of what an entrepreneur is and what's not. Research and development is also very important. Um, to have data is money, I was just telling Omiya that. Um, to have the information that you, it requires for you to build a business. I need so much data. If I'm, if I'm doing the online magazine, I need to know how many people are in Sudan, what types of um, age groups they are, where do they live, how can I reach them. All of these basic information for you, but it can make a huge impact on developing a business. The other thing is um, human resources. People. I mean, in Qatar, we have a very, it was very challenging to get actual high quality individuals who are willing to come and work for you as a small little poor entrepreneur with very basic salary. And it actually links again to the education system where I, what is entrepreneurship for me and what can I actually do? And the required skills also. Um, so I have to resource at what point. I have to actually go to another country and outsource and get people to help me out. Um, the last thing is with funding and investment and having um, a, a mobilized the, the banking system also to have funds, <coughs> whether seed funding or even um, uh, how we my capital and all of that. Um, a lot of banks don't have that knowledge yet. They'll just give you a loan with incredibly high uh, interest rate. They just don't care. But if we actually try to foster the entrepreneurial side and try to work with the bank, and I'm speaking here maybe from um, from an incubator point of view, because someone, someone needs to start to do this. Someone needs to start the change, so that can actually this whole support system start to work together. Tamam? Great, so this is sort of the basic understanding of what, uh, what, what is an incubator, what is a business incubator, what should you expect from it as an entrepreneur, and what should they be striving for? Tamam? Numtu? Perfect. <laughs> Great. I want to... Nobody has any questions? Cool. Yes. I love questions. Um, I just wanted to know what is the difference between an entrepreneur and a businessman? What are their... How can you differentiate between the two? Okay. Awesome question. Thank you. Um, I was reading yesterday. Um, I love this book. It's called The Lean Startup. It talks about how you manage, um, how you become an entrepreneur, how you manage a business in a lean way. 
The guy said, being an entrepreneur is what they told him, is being passionate, risk taker, um, you know, having the commitment, you know, just go do it. Those are the right stuff for being an entrepreneur. He said, that's not quite right. You can still do, have these things that are important, but you still need your management skills. You still need your business skills. So it's a mixture of two. Being a businessman, it could be more into, you know, like what you think is like the old stereotype of like management and, you know, do this and do that. Not about leadership. So entrepreneurship is a little bit a mixture of being an entrepreneur is the risk taker, the initiative taking, being passionate, doing what you sort of think outside the box, sort of concept, but also have these management skills. Cool? Any more questions? No. Oh, yes. How does an integrator self-sustain itself? We talked about one is about government funded, what about other options? Great, awesome. So the government funded one, it's directly funded by the government, great. The non-for the for-profit incubator, basically what they do is they take equity and shares from what you do, from your from your business. You know? So they invest in you X amount of money in return for like 10%, 5%, 1%. So this is how they sustain themselves. Other type is basically they charge you for the services that you they give you, excluding the funding. So if you're renting your office space, you're, I don't know, use it, you're coming to networking event, they have packages with certain services. Cool? Awesome. No more questions. Yes? <coughs> How can you be an entrepreneur? You can decide right now that I want to be an entrepreneur. Like, right now. Um, just <laughs> say I want to be an entrepreneur. That's the decision, yeah? But then you have to have an idea or you have to have a sort of a passion that you want to accomplish. Yeah? Then you sit down, if you don't know how to make that idea into a business, you sit down with someone who knows, and then they will lead you in a way to you know, convert your idea into a business. And that's sort of a whole lot of planning. And we can talk about that if you want. Cool? Awesome. Great. So now I just wanted to know, uh, but I wanted to tell you guys about what we did um, and how did we start our incubator back in Qatar. And just keep in mind that it was the first incubator um, Qatar being a, a, um, a very conservative sort of um, culture, but I'm talking about both for expats and for um, Qataris, and the whole stigma about, you know what, you graduate from school, you go to university, you graduate, you get a job, you get a good job, you get married, <coughs> the end. <laughs> this is like perfect, this is the perfect scenario. But this is not the case. So imagine that everyone have this deeply implanted in them, and I mean everyone, even my parents, okay? Um, and you've been, you know, programmed for this. So, and then you come and tell me, you know, forget all this, and like, forget your job, forget even, you know, you could be studying medicine, but my ideas in technology, I forget what you studied, and then just come and do this. And you're probably not gonna get paid for two or three years. So you can imagine the shock that it, uh, your parents had. Anyone want water? It's right there. Yeah, sure, sure. Awesome. Um, uh, so yeah, so we had that covered. So for us, as an, um, uh, for me, as I graduated from, um, from university, I studied in Qatar, and the first time I heard about entrepreneurship is when I joined an organization called ISEC. And we've learned about it from a perspective of training and how to become an entrepreneur and how you can be passionate. And, and honestly, between you and me, I have that same mindset. And I was supposed to study medicine, but then I joined Isaac and then just you know, forget all about that and I studied business. Um, and I think that's where it's the whole idea and passion about entrepreneurship came. And then I graduated and I joined the team that is doing the business incubator. And being in the university and, 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 and talking to people and with that thick mindset of no, nobody is going to do entrepreneurship, no way. And you're coming and telling me I'm going to start a center that actually focusing on entrepreneurs, that's not going to work. And for the first time that we actually did, what we did is, um, what we did as an incubator, we sat down and we kind of went through these steps. First of all, Qatar has a national vision of 2030. They know exactly what they're focusing on for the next years, till 2030. We took that and we studied it very carefully. And then we looked at, as, 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 as the ministry, as the team, and then we looked at the national strategy for five years. It talks about everything, you know, like what, um, what are the business goals, what are, you know, their goals in education, health, all of these things. And then we focused again 
zooming in in the technology side. In the, what are they aspiration? What is other aspirations for from a technology perspective in the five in the next five years? The idea was in 2030 we want it to be a global hub or at least an Arabic for um, an, a hub from the Arab that is a te sorry a technology hub. Um, and where it's sort of like a small little version of Silicon Valley, yeah? Just a step. So they can actually build on that and kind of grow from there on. And then we developed, after looking at this kind of bigger picture and then narrowing it down, we established our technology strategy. We said, we wanted to build an incubator. As a start, we wanted to incubate around five people. Then by next year, we wanted to incubate 20. And then it grows and grows and, and grows. Come on. Basically, after we actually said, all right, so we're building an incubator, we're not building an innovation center, or we're not building a co-working space. We came up with a very simple model. What we're going to be doing, we're going to take Umnia, listen to her idea, help her to conceptualize their, her idea, build a business plan, incubate her for two years. She's going to stay with us. She's going to have free office space, free coffee, Wi-Fi, access to a network, um, you know, funding, money, which everyone sort of cry because they really want money. And then for two years, after two years, two years and a half, she should be ready to be on her own, to rent her own office space and to work. Great? So the whole two years where you're poor and you don't have money, we help you and support you and we'll be there. Honestly, I worked as a therapist also. That's another thing. A lot of people come in crying and, you know, like my parents and my mom and all of that. And then after two years, you should be gone. So this is a, with a very simple model. Come on. That's great, so this is what we did. However, there are so many people, there were so many challenges at the beginning, sorry, because a lot of people didn't really understand what's going on, or what are you guys trying to tell us? And this is one of the challenges I'm gonna be speaking about later on. But we reached out, we did some awesome job, and we had a lot of people um, interested in becoming entrepreneurs. So the idea was just to create a very simple application process, because we cannot take all of you right now to be in an incubator where we can only host five people or five companies, come on. So we, we have, and this is basically a blueprint, all, all incubators and all co-working space have sort of a similar or just kind of a variation of this process. You submit an online application, you go through a selection panel, you get invited to do a presentation about your idea so we can get to know why are you, what is it? Why are you, what are you, are you really passionate about what you're trying to do? And is what you're trying to do makes money? and um, like what are your skills and so on. And then um, if we said you're cool, so let's say 400 people apply, we only take around like 10, uh, sorry, like um, uh, 40 and we give them like business plan help because remember we're only focusing on technology. We didn't take people who wanted to start a cupcake business, I buy a business, you know, all of these, no. We only took people who are interested in technology. <coughs> And we help them with their business plan. After they actually sit down and do their business plan, we bring a completely different panel of judges that comes and listen to you, actually reviews your business plan in details, and selects the final sort of five. Tamam? So it's a very thorough process just to select the right type of people. And imagine for a country, I know it's very small, Qatar, that was the first time and that was the first incubator. So what I'm trying to say is the more incubator, the better. Um, so after that, um, after the business plan and we select the five, they started their incubation period and their two years, and then you live happily after, a little bit miserably, and then you graduate. Cool. So I wanted to, so just to give you an idea of, to just put you in the scenario of where we are, the challenges, and they're here, what I wanted to speak, um, the challenges that we face. The first one is the mindset, and I told you the stigma and the culture that we face, and a lot of people, um, I was just telling Umnia, entrepreneurship for the, the young, the, the guys that actually came in and they were incubated was a hobby. You know, they go in the morning, they wake up, they go to their day job from five, from, sorry, from eight to five, and then they go home for a shower and change and come around seven so they can run their own business. It's a hobby. They do it when they're free. And that was the, the first, one of the first challenges. Well, the first challenge was to convince people to, you know, you know start your own business and then this was actually a huge challenge. We had an incubator, and the incubator was empty all throughout the morning. People come after we came to, like after we leave. So to go home, people come, so they can actually work on their business. And this was crazy. 
because th this doesn't work. And when you actually sit down and assess them, because we do, you know, quarterly assessment of each after three months, well, you guys don't really support us, or well, we don't have enough money, or that person didn't really pick up their phone to sell them a certain product. Well, because you weren't there. You were not there in the morning. You weren't there in the morning. So that was one of the first challenges that, that one of the main challenges that we faced in the um, people really didn't take it seriously. But fortunately, with a lot of nagging and a lot of you know talking with these people, they managed to change this. We had you know the first time the first Qatari quit their job and it was a really good job to actually focus on their business. We celebrated, and there was a lot of people after that quit their jobs and actually started to focus on their business. And since that time, it what we noticed that really there was a noticeable success in the in, in the businesses, in the business operation. The other thing is the government regulation, as I mentioned earlier. There was a lot of obstacles and hurdles that are made for people, for companies that are already established. But for the little guys who just started, there was a lot of regulations. You know? um, the other thing is the high cost of startup, but it's also uh, relative to the regulation. If I wanted to start, even if it's a social um, business, it's an NGO, I need around, I think, 10 million just to start up a, a, like an NGO. Like, where would I get that money? But it was very, very, very hard. Um, access, access to financial support, till now, it's, there's no, um, like a proper funding, you know, place where you go to where they can actually give you 200 and then, so you can start your business. Are we okay? No? It's fine. Okay. Um, the other challenges were, as I said earlier, was human resources. There was a lot of challenges where we couldn't find people to actually work with these startups. So we had to work a lot when it comes to awareness, when it comes to um, doing a lot of activities like competitions. I mean, we had a couple of awesome competitions where people, you know, just to excite people so they can actually come out, uh, be excited and voice their ideas and get the support that they needed. So yeah, so one of the great, so what we try to do is the solutions that we, can you click? Okay, the solutions that we did is basically, number one, we worked closely with other stakeholders, with other, with other government institutions, we worked with companies, um, we worked with banks. We tried so hard to create, um, and besides working on the incubator, to create policies, to create strategies so we can, other people can, um, so the ecosystem can actually grow and nourish with us because we cannot do it alone as an incubator. And thank God right now there are actually another huge incubator that opened um, that is actually more sort of um, in a wider range, not only technology. And solution that we actually did, and I was talking about the, the, the competitions that we did. So we did something called the Innovation Theater, which was, you know, imagine an exhibition, technology exhi exhibition, just crazy booths and all of that. And you have a theater in, in exactly the middle of it, where people um, come and talk to successful entrepreneurs. It was a very intimate time where I can actually speak to a founder of an ex-company and actually share their, uh, they share their experience. And that was one of the great motivations for people because there was a lack of, you know, um, um, a role model. I never saw someone who actually did it before me. So having that opportunity with people, um, uh, with, with a successful entrepreneur was very, was very beneficial. A lot of people who came out of these competitions actually sort of um, succeeded. And I'm actually getting one minute um, notice. Great, you can click. Um, I'm just going to sort of wrap what, um, uh, what I just said. Um, you guys right now kind of know what a business incubator is and what business incubations are trying to do is trying to help young people like the guy right there and Umiya here. Uh, your name, so I can not prepare you as a, Muhammad, as Muhammad and as Umiya. So they can actually strive and work on their, and work on their passion and create it and develop a business with it. This leads to, imagine there are like thousands and thousands of Muhammad and Umiya. There will be a huge economic development. There will be diversification. Um, different businesses coming up. Um, it keeps them alive. It keeps them engaged. They they be working in what they what they love and they're passionate about. Um, and also, if you created so many of these companies, there will be so many of jobs available. You'll be creating new jobs. Great. Um, and there's nothing, trust me, as working in something that you love dearly. And I think the people who are going to be speaking after me, they're going to kind of prove that point to you. Um, I think that's it for me. And if you guys have any questions, I'm going to be around. You can grab me at any time. Cool?